Do you find you struggle mixing your own skin colours? Well in today's video I'm going to show you some top tips on how to make that an awful lot easier, coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and in today's video we're going to learn how to mix skin tone. There are loads of videos out there guys in terms of how to mix skin tone for acrylic paints but this is going to go one step further. The whole point of Paint and Pino is to give you some of those extra top tips to help make your painting skills so much easier. So we're not just going to learn how to just do the skin tones but we're also going to show you a fantastic top tip in terms of when you mix colours, knowing how you can get those colours back again without losing them in a whole mod podge of colour mixing. Alrighty, let's have a look at the video. Here we go. Alright then guys, so here's the colours I'm actually going to be using today. So I've just simply gone with the titanium white and then you can see I've got the three primary colours here. There's no black you'll notice. The only interesting note I suppose really here is that I've gone with the actual warm yellow as opposed to the cool yellow. Um, and then these, it doesn't matter so much with the red and the blue. I've actually gone here with the cooler red and the warmer blue. But this is the key. You want a slightly orangey yellow. If you don't have the warm yellow, you just have a, a cool yellow or a variation of that, it is fine. The focus here is that we're using the three primary colours because we want to mix a tertiary colour. So when it comes to doing actual skin tone, it always used to make me laugh when I was at school because... They would talk about skin tone being 80% white, 10% red, 10% yellow. Of course, that's a very Caucasian skin. So what I'm going to be producing for you guys is, is what I would call your basic tertiary colour. Just a quick recap, tertiary colours involve all three primary colours. They often get mistaught, even in art school. So you've got to have all elements of the primary colours in order to create a tertiary colour. So of course the ultimate tertiary colour is brown. So I'm going to start up by mixing the brown to start with. So in an ideal world, you'll have 33% yellow, red, and blue. You'll notice how I'm taking the paint. I'm actually coming from underneath. I'm not going on top because that's where you contaminate your paint. And you'll also notice here, this is key. So I've just put my three colors next to each other. So again, I'm not contaminating at this stage. Now, when we start to mix, this is the trick that I wanna show you guys. So I'm just gonna start mixing this brown color. It might not come out on the uh, camera quite so well and of course it's pretty difficult to be a perfectly accurate in terms of 33.333% but you can get the gist that's a fairly decent brown color that I've got going on here now in order to make my skin tones what I want to have now is when I'm going to start adding my white I don't want to go into this area here you see a lot of people mixing colors and they just produce a mass block of color and it's then really difficult to control and you also forget which colors you've had previously. So this is the trick I wanna show you guys. So I'm gonna take my white, I'm gonna take quite a lot of white and I'm going to mix this just next to my brown. Now straight away, I can see that having mixed that into the brown color I had already, there's way too much red. You can almost see that this has turned out pink. And again, it's one of those things that people seem to think that our skin tones are generally pink. They're actually mainly yellow, believe it or not. So what I'm gonna do here is I need to add a little bit of yellow. And again, watch what happens here. I'm going to leave this color because you never know, later on I might need to have a color that's just like that. And I'm going to work my color next to it. Now I've got a lot of pigments on my brush, so I don't need to actually be adding those individual colors. This is kind of my base color that I've started with. So you can see here now that the three different colors I've got going on, this is obviously a lot yellower. It's still pretty dark, all right? If I'm going for a tonal color, I mean, I'm pretty tan because it's just coming to the end of our summer, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more white into here. And again, I'm going to start mixing it next to that original color. In theory, you would cover the whole of your palette with different areas and different skin tones. You know, the trick is we don't want to keep going back into that same area. So you're going to end up with variations of that color. If you, some people I even know actually write above the, the rough size or the rough proportions, that's a little bit excessive for me. And I would never ever be able to get that exact same color. But you know, it just gives you a good reference point. So I'm just going to keep adding white here. So I'm going to get to my coolest point. A little bit more yellow, I think as well. And then that's what you would go with is, that's more of a traditional Caucasian skin tone. This is the key guys, that you've got all those three colors. So in theory, 
let's say these have dried out, you've still got the evidence there. So if you need to mix up those colors, then obviously you would just go to the three that you had originally and you would start to try and mix those colors just below. So you can see that reference point like so. Now, one last tip, guys, in terms of color mixing, it's really important that you want to be able to maintain the acrylics. Acrylics are notorious for actually drying out really quickly. So what I'd like to show you today is a top tip that I like to use in terms of keeping your colors from drying out. So all I've done here is I've taken, this is actually an old olive pot. You can use any foodware at home. Um, Butter tabs are really good for things like this. Anything that's plastic, of course, plastic being the curse of the world at the moment. If you can reuse plastic, all the better. So all I've done here is I've simply taken this olive pot, I've actually kept the sleeve on. You could in theory just use some cling film and put it over the top, but all I'm doing here is this has already got a nice firm seal anyway, so I can tape this down later. So you can see that I've got my colors in here. I've actually just sprayed a little bit of water beforehand just to keep them nice and moist, because it could be another 24 hours before I decide to use these paints. And then all I wanna do is basically seal, tape this over, and then they should be good to go without drying out tomorrow. So there you have it guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to mix skin tones, how to generally mix tertiary colors, and also how to keep your colors separate. We've also shown you how to keep those acrylic paints from drying out. So plenty of top tips in today's video. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this today, we do upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.